All right, so let's start by saying that this is only the second hide of anything that I've ever done. Hey y'all, so you remember I mentioned that one of the steers that went was one of my favorite steers and that we were gonna get his hide back. So I have yet to unfold it. Basically they just salt it and they fold it up until we pick it up. I need to get it unfolded and determine whether or not it needs to be salted again. I wanted to bring y'all along so y'all could see the cow hide. All right, so since we've had it, I've just been storing it um, in the walk-in cooler. Um, it's just been folded up under the table. So let's pull it out and see what we got. They are so heavy. They're usually pretty messy when you unfold them um, because there's a lot of salt. So I'll have a little bit of cleanup to do in here. I've only done one cow hide before and it basically consumed my life for about two weeks. You know what, I think I'm gonna drag this outside and do this outside first. There's a lot of salt in here. And I'm not really concerned about it getting dirty at this point, so it's okay if it gets a little bit of sand on it um, because this hide will get washed. Um, I just really want to get it spread out so I can take a look at it. All right, so this is what we're working with at the moment. Um, this is the flesh side of the hide. Uh, this was the head of the animal. And then working down to the tail end of the animal. So they look like they did a really good job of fleshing it already a little bit for me. Walk in cooler. Uh, that way it stays nice and cool and doesn't get rancid. So I'm gonna flip it over. All right, here we are, y'all. I am excited to see this hide. Like I said, was my favorite steer. So I really wanna try to preserve it the best that I can because um, we've got a lot of great memories with this steer. He was a fun guy and he had a little heart on his butt. I'm just gonna unfold it right here on this table and just kind of let it drape over the table. <laughs> if I can get it unfolded. really tempted to start scraping at it a little bit right now. Maybe take off the parts that are super fleshy still. There's not many and I'll show y'all what I'm talking about. What you want to avoid with these hides is having that fat go rancid on the hide. That causes a lot of odor, which is not good. All right, y'all, this is what I'm talking about right here. See this big clump of fat right here? I'm gonna go ahead and come through with a knife and get that off. There's some smaller ones here. Ideally, we want it to be closer to this right here, how this is just nice and smooth. So we just want to get rid of these big clumps at this stage and then go ahead and throw some salt where we removed that. All right, y'all, I broke into my survival salt for this. I've got my favorite knife and I've got my cutting gloves on because I've cut myself bad a couple of times doing farm stuff and have learned my lesson. So, uh, definitely need the cutting gloves. Let's start fleshing this. Whoever did the initial fleshing on this, I think did a pretty good job. I'm also gonna go ahead and start to trim off these edges 
these edges are usually pretty fatty and the last time they were really hard to deflesh because they're just in random pieces, I guess you would say. So I'm gonna make a, um, a natural cut. You can already see I started right here and I am gonna go along the lines of the animal. That way it's not a straight cut, but it will keep me from having to flesh all of these edges, which I found to be really tough last time. All right, so you can see this edge now. It still has like a nice natural shape to it but uh, it's much cleaner and will be easier to flip. Hey y'all, I'm back in the walk-in cooler. Um, my hive is still in here. I haven't really had a chance to work on it, so I've got a couple free hours today. So I figured I would come in here and start to get busy on it. It has just been laid out on this table right here. I've got the pool bot running, so it's 35 degrees in here. I saw somebody that was um, trying to process and preserve one of these cow hides and um, they had a really good idea to use a stone grinder um, just on the surface of the hide to get some of that flesh off of there. The last one I did, I did use a wire brush, not this early on. So um, I just did a little test spot and I really like how it looks. So I'm going to show y'all what it looks like um, so you can kind of see the process. All right, so this is the area right here that I just did a test spot on. You can see it really cleans it off nicely. Um, there's still a little bit of flesh on there though. Those strips that you see um, definitely need to come off too. It needs to look more like this white spot right here. So I'm going to get busy and keep on working on it because um, I've got a lot of space to cover. faster than hand scraping. It's just, I guess, one of these little stone blades. And um, you can see, I mean, it's just doing a really nice job. Um, there's still some of this like little fibrous layer, but once that dries, I'll go over it with a wire brush and a lot of that will come off as well. This was a much faster way to deflesh this hide. I've done almost the whole center section of it in about probably 15 or 20 minutes. So I'm gonna keep going. All right, y'all. Well, I am super pleased with the progress that I made. Um, I just spent probably about an hour and a half and got this pretty well fleshed out. Um, definitely still have some of that fibrous kind of layer, but what I'm going to do is let that dry out a little bit more. Maybe I'll get the wire brush on the drill and wire brush it from here. So we are moving right along with the cowhide. I honestly feel like what just took me an hour and a half, the first time that I did, it probably took me 12 to 15 hours to get to this step. That stone grinder made all the difference in the world. And I'll show y'all all the flesh that came off. That's a pretty big pile. So I got all that off in an hour and a half. Super cool. It's all new to me. So basically, I'm just finding, um, you know, what works for me with the materials that we have here on hand. Um, it might not be the right way to do it, and I'm sure some people that do this professionally would probably die 
at how I'm doing it and tell me that I'm doing it all wrong. So that's fine. Um, I definitely learned from my mistakes from the first hide that I processed. Um, so I would really like this one to come out a little bit softer um, because the first one, although it's preserved really nicely, um, it's pretty stiff and um, it's basically ended up as some decoration on my back porch, which is beautiful and I love it. Um, so I'm not sad with how it came out, but I'm hoping that this hide will come out a little bit softer. So at this point, um, I've had the hide for about three weeks. It stayed laid out on the table for a good week and a half or so before I got in there and started fleshing it, um, which I think has been fine because it's been in the walk-in cooler. Um, if you don't have a walk-in cooler and you're trying to do something like this, um, you definitely want to start with a really fresh hide from what I understand, like fresh off the animal. Go ahead and get it defleshed um, before any rot starts to sit in because if it's not in a cooler um, and kept at a very low temperature, rot will start to set in. It worked out really good having the walk-in cooler that we could put the hide in. Now that I've got it pretty well defleshed, um, I'm just leaving it in the walk-in cooler for right now. Um, I haven't put a whole lot of research into preserving these hides other than your basic steps. Your basic steps are going to be to uh, do the initial defleshing, which is basically taking it off of the animal, um, salting the hide, and giving the hide a good amount of time to dry out. Um, mine stayed salted and in a walk-in cooler for a good two to three weeks before anything was done to it. After you get it salted and it starts to dry out some, then you can go ahead and finish the defleshing, which is what I just did today. After the defleshing, I'll probably go over it with a wire brush and maybe some sandpaper to get that fibrous layer taken off a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and give the hide a really good wash. Um, it has not been washed yet. It's really dirty because, you know, it was on a cow out in the elements. Um, so it definitely needs a good soak in a, um, I'll probably use like a large 55 gallon barrel, or I might even use my wheelbarrow. Um, just fill it up with some Dawn dish soap. And that'll probably wash it a couple of times. Um, and then I will lay it back out onto the table and let it dry some. You don't want it to completely dry. Um, and then you move on to the tanning process. Last time I got my tanning solution right off of Amazon. Um, it was like a hunter trapper tanner solution. Um, and that worked fine. I, I'm not sure if I'll use that again or maybe if I wanna research a little bit more to try to find out are there some other ways to preserve it. Hopefully, it would be super fantastic if I could actually get this hide as decoration in my house. Um, it was my favorite steer. Um, so it would be super cool if I could actually get it in the house. I don't know that that's gonna happen. <laughs> it might end up as porch decoration or barn decoration, which is fine too, because we're on the porch and we're in the barn a lot. So we can still enjoy it regardless. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background and uh, let you know where we're at and where we're going from here. <laughs> I lucked out today, y'all, and got some farm helpers. Um, yes. So this is my farm helper for the day, uh, Marley. Hi. <laughs> Marley's already helped me pick some green beans this morning. And what else did you pick? I picked an onion. Yep, an yes. onion. And Oh, no, we didn't do the strawberries. Um, we'll have to get back on that in a little while. But for now, we are in the walk-in cooler because it's hot outside. Yeah, it's very hot. It's much nicer in here. We're just working on this cow hide. Mm -hmm. Yep, but I lucked out and I got a helper today. <laughs> Thanks, Marley. I wanted to come in here and check on my hide. It's been a few days since I've been out here with the grinder cleaning it up. Yes. Um, and it's actually started to dry out really nicely. Yeah, huh? it looks really cool. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go over it again with the grinder to get it thinned out even a little bit more. But I wanted to give you all a quick little update so you could see where I'm at with the project. All right, so you can see right here, it's still got that fiber layer on it that I was talking about. But it's actually pretty dry right now. Um, the hide is not totally dry. It still kind of has a little bit of dampness to it, which is good um, because it's still nice and flexible. Um, but this fiber layer is pretty dry. So I'm going over that with the grinder 
I've already done this spot and it looks so much nicer. It's very smooth. Yes, it's starting to smooth out and not feel so rough like it does down here. So it's so neat to see it go through all the different know. steps. Yes, you know, it's so cool. It is so cool. It's a process. I think it's going to look, it's going to look better when we're done. Yeah. I can't wait to get this side done oh, yeah. so we can flip it over and start seeing the pretty side. Yeah. All right. Well, my farm helper helped me carry out the cowhide and this is the final result. This is amazing. It is. It yes. Looks so good. I'm so happy that you're just as I'm excited as I am. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I figured we would bring this out and we're just kind of shaking it off to um, get some of the sandiness off of it. But um, all in all, this is looking so good. All right, let's flip it over. All right, well, it's still super dirty. We haven't washed it yet. So that I believe is going to be our next step, Marley. I think we're going to put it in a barrel with some soapy water and get it washed. All right, Marley's grabbing the soap. We've got the hide in the barrel and in the wheelbarrow and we're just going to take it over to the shade yes. and start so, giving the hide its bubble bath. And it's gonna be like, I love bubble bath. Yes. <laughs> It is a dirty, dirty hide. You see his freckles on his skin? I know, that's so cute. gonna let it sit here and drip dry and all right y'all I've got the hide folded up in the walk-in cooler I folded it up because some of the edges were starting to dry out a little bit and I ordered a new to me tanning solution so um, that hasn't gotten here yet so I want to go ahead and unfold it I've got some neat's foot oil um, I'm going to go ahead and oil the edges of the hide to keep them moist. I want to go ahead and oil some of those edges so they stay pliable um, until I can get the tanning solution on it. Um, and then after we tan it, um, after that cures, uh, I will oil it again and then we will start working the hide a little bit to help keep it soft and flexible um, as much as we can anyways. It is a cow hide, so we'll see how it goes. And I will tell y'all, now that we've washed this, this side of the hide is so incredibly soft. It feels like silk. So um, I'm super happy with that. Uh, let me get this unfolded so we can get these edges oiled. Uh, but this hide feels really, really good. I'm so excited for this hide, y'all. It really does feel amazing. So. 
Um, these are the edges. This is the tail end of the animal. Um, this skin down here seems to be a little thicker than it is at the head of the animal. Um, and these are the edges that were getting stiff. So I had those folded up on the inside so they would stay nice and moist until my oil came. So let me finish unfolding this. All right, so here's the flesh side of the hide um, down at the tail end of the animal like I was just talking about. Um, I did thin this a little bit more. It's still pretty thick though, but I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and oil these edges right here all along this side um, because they are definitely a little thicker and stiffer than what you would originally want them. All right, like if you come down here and look at this end, this is the head end of the animal. Um, this is much thinner down here. Still got some little stringy things on here, but we can trim those off. Um, but this is much thinner as you can see. So this end will stay a lot more flexible and soft just because of the thinness of it. All right, let's get it oiled. I'm just kind of brushing it on. Okay, y'all, so this hide was folded up um, after I put the Neat's Foot oil on it. I basically just did the Neat's Foot oil around the edges um, to keep them from drying out, and I folded it up um, just while I was waiting on my tanning solution to get here. So this is what I'm using. It's called True Bond. I'm basically just going over it with this True Bond. It says to apply it very liberally and let it soak in. And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to hang a bar up here across the top so we can drape it over. And as this is drying with this True Bond on it, we will work the hide um, stretching it and breaking the fibers in it to help keep it soft as it's drying. So um, that's where we're at. Okay, so the whole flesh side is covered in the tree bond now. So I've just got it folded in on itself. Um, the directions say to let it sit like this for two hours to let the tree bond soak in. And then like I said, we're gonna install a bar up here and just kind of drape it over that and hang it from that. And every 12 hours, we'll come in here and work and stretch the hide as it dries. All right, so it's been about 24 hours since I put the True Bond on the hide. Um, it's still hanging up in the walk-in cooler, um, which had been set to like 35-ish degrees or whatever, but I decided to start acclimating this um, to a normal room temperature. So I've got the AC set at 73 in here now. And um, I am super happy with how this hide is looking. It's drying really, really nice. It's actually staying somewhat soft. So um, I do need to spend some time working the hide. This is the perfect time, I think, to go ahead and stretch it a little bit, which is super hard to do. Um, because I'm not that strong, nor are my arms that long. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna get in here and start kind of stretching this a little bit and uh, just for a few minutes is all you gotta take, a few minutes at a time. And uh, that way it'll hopefully continue to stay soft. Super happy with how this one's turning out. I think it's definitely gonna turn out I don't want to say definitely. It's like never say never. Uh, but I do think it's going to turn out a little softer than the first one I did. So, all right, I'm going to start stretching.
I need to get Tori in here to help me stretch this. Well, hey y'all, it's been about a week since my last update on the hide, um, but I wanted to give you a quick update. Um, because I went ahead and took it out of the walk-in cooler, but was still a little supple and damp. So I wanted to bring it up on the back porch. And um, instead of hanging this one to dry, I am going to lay this one flat to dry. The first hide I did hanging up to dry. And it dried kind of uneven. Well, not uneven. It just didn't dry flat. Here's the hide right here. And so all of these edges that you can see that are like wavy, those are hard. And so the edges don't really lay flat, which I didn't want this to happen with this hide. So I went ahead and laid it out on my porch, y'all. And um, I'm super happy with how it's turning out. Um, so at this point, what I'm doing is brushing it to get it um, a little bit cleaner. Um, there was a lot of kind of like dandruff even though you wash the hide, as it's drying out, it gets a little flaky. So I've got a, this is actually my brush that I use to groom my great peonies. Um, and I'm just brushing it and walking the edges of the hide to get them to lay down flat. But I will show y'all the other side. So this is what it looks like right now on this side. I have already put the tanning solution on it. Still somewhat soft. The next step for this side is going to be to put a sander on it um, to try to even it out a little bit more and give it a little bit more of a softer finish. It's All this is still a little rough, but that is okay. And what I will probably do is trim it a little on this side just to kind of even it out a little bit. And um, I don't know, I might try to make something small with that piece that I trim off because I do love that piece with the white on it. But that's what I'm thinking I might do just to make it a little more symmetrical. And I'm just gonna keep walking these edges I've just been walking them like this and kind of pressing those down with my feet so they lay a little flatter as it's completely drying. I believe at this stage, a lot of people that tan these hides professionally they have big drums that are like eight to 10 foot in diameter and they tumble dry these hides at this point, which helps break them and soften them out. Obviously, I don't have a tumble dryer <laughs> that's eight to 10 feet, so I can't quite do that. Um, but I feel like if I keep working these sides with my feet, these edges with my feet, that uh, they will flatten out and lay a little better on the edges. All right, y'all, I did get these edges down a little bit flatter so they would lay a little nicer. I rehydrated it with a little bit of oil. And y'all, I think I'm gonna call this cowhide done. Hey y'all, if y'all made it this far, thanks for following along with my cowhide video. Um, if you have any suggestions on how I can um, change my process, um, if you have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I am always um, looking to learn uh, new things. So 
Um, I'm super happy with how this cowhide came out. Um, I do think that I'm gonna be able to use it as a rug um, as long as I just keep this nice and hydrated to keep it somewhat flexible. So thanks again for following along. Um, if you haven't al already, like and subscribe. And you can also listen to my podcast, American Farmstead Hers with an H. Um, we are on iTunes and Spotify and Apple and all the channels. So um, that podcast is done with my dear friend Donna from Hazel Bell Farm. So if you haven't already checked out Hazel Bell, um, please do so. All right. Thanks, y'all.